Hey everybody, welcome back to another Create tutorial. Today we're going to go over a very brand new Docker in Creative 5.2 called the Wide Gamut Color Selector. We're going to go to Settings, Dockers, and all the way down to Wide Gamut Color Selector. And this is what it looks like by default. So right off the bat, you can kind of tell it looks similar to the Advanced Color Selector, which I'm going to carefully make bigger here. Oh, jeez. There's one thing I want improved in the next major update. It's selecting the borders on these things. There we go. All right, they're not exactly the same size, but it's close enough. So we can see right away that by default, they both have the triangle in the middle. They have the outer color ring. They have the um, color bars down here and the history of what color you used. This one's on the side and the right hand side. This one's on the bottom. Now the difference between them is pretty obvious already. The outer ring portion here is very pastel-y. And if you look, it's because of where my cursor is. So if I were to go to a darker color here, the advanced color selector isn't going to show me what the outer ring looks like with that uh, saturation or hue value. If I completely go to a gray, it's not going to update that either. Or if I want to add just a little bit of color, it's just not going to update any of this. It's going to stay exactly as its raw color. Whereas the wide gamut color selector, as we can see, is changing that for you on the fly. So if you're saying you need a desaturated blue, but not too desaturated, we'll, we'll say it's like this color here, it's like a, that slate gray almost. And you're like, okay, I need that color but I need other colors within that same range. So instead of just kind of trying to see what that looks like by moving the, you know, the color range around here, you can automatically see that on the color selector ring. So you don't have to kind of sample each color and guess. So I can go ahead, I'm just gonna make my brush bigger here. I'm gonna make that color, ooh, it's really nice, turquoise. I'm gonna add some more blue. I'm gonna add this purple range, uh, reddish orange, yellow and more of a green and those are all in the same saturation so now when i go to make the illustration i can say all right i have some consistency in my color i didn't have to do a lot of work to get that you know this made my life a little bit easier and you can see all those colors down here on the bottom are showing up including the first one that i had selected so that's really helpful now if i want completely saturated colors it will match the original advanced color selector and if I want let's say I want it super saturated but I just want it to be darker I can do the same thing all right here are my colors that are all within the same range I have my darker purplish blue whatever this magenta violet this reddish color I'm not naming these proper what you get the idea all right so now I have all of these colors within the same family to some degree without a lot of you know guesswork that I can just oh yeah I think this will work you know it makes it a little easier this is actually really really nice um, all right so now we've got that like the basics of what this does we're gonna go over a little bit more because it's not quite the only thing it can do we're gonna select this little icon here under the color model we can go to different uh, oops, ranges, oh my goodness, color families, color models, whatever you want to call them, here automatically. So you can have the default triangle, you can use the square, you can use um, a color wheel with the, uh, the value and then the saturation, I believe. Oh, no, it's the value, I think, regardless. These stand for something specific. I always say I don't remember them because I never do. I look them up, I try to make a note, and then I forget them. So, but um, you can see how this changes with each color mode here, which is really nice. I think it's hue, saturation, intensity, and then something else. But depending on what you're doing and what you're using and your personal preferences, this is pretty helpful. Now we can edit this even further by going to configure and we have a ton of options and because we have so many options this is going to be split into two videos because this is a lot to go over the main thing i want to focus on for this video is the color selector 
So we have a hue ring appearance, and that is this outer ring right here. Right now, it is dynamic, and we can also do static. I'm gonna hit OK. So now it's it's static, it's the default. Um, it's not really gonna change. Make sure I'm out of the right mode here. So this is gonna match the original advanced color selector, and no matter what I do, this is not going to change the look of the outer ring. It's static, it's stuck there, all right? And what we were using before was the dynamic one, where we changed the saturation and the value and all that good stuff for the color and it would respond. And the third option is a static edge. This is extremely helpful. If you are using very desaturated and dark colors, and maybe you are colorblind, for example, or maybe you have trouble seeing those colors for whatever reason, maybe your monitor is just not great, whatever it is, you now have this outer ring to kind of help you a little bit of saying this is the green, this is the blue, the light blue, you know, because certain values, they kind, of, they kind of start to blur a little bit. So if you want a pure red, you can go here and say, okay, this is the pure red area. Or if you want to add a little bit of orange, it's just an extra color guide for you. And it looks really cool. And then again, we can go down here to change the color mode or color model. Another thing we can do is change the appearance of this. So we have a blue bar on the top. So when we select something, you can see which one is selected and you can change it here by hitting okay. If you notice, not all of those are in here either. So if we go back to configure, we want to go to, here we go, uh, general, and go to the favorite selector layouts. So you can see these are the default ones that we're showing before. They all have that blue line on the top. These are selected as favorites. So let's say you don't like this one here and you prefer this one. You can hit OK go back to our color models and now that's going to show up for each option and that's pretty nice so if you prefer this option here you can have that selected for each of these color models and it's really nice because I mean I think this would work better in my opinion because you can see what color ranges are available and what aren't especially this one but that's just me all right if we go back here to configure. We have more options here under pop-ups, general, shade selector, and color patches. I'm going to just briefly go over the color patches just because that um, is quick and easy and then the rest we'll go over in another video just to keep this a little short. We're already at 10 minutes recording time or around there. So the color patches are these patches down here on the bottom of the docker. So we have color history and colors from image. So right now we only have one row for each. I'm just going to leave that and hit OK. So color um, from image, we're going to hit refresh. This is just going to gather a bunch of ranges of the colors that we were using. So we have this lovely violet color. You can see it doesn't really exist. I'm actually going to zoom in here so we can see. It's a little different than this violet that I use. It's kind of pulling from what I used and giving me new color ranges. So you can see I have one row for that as well. So we're gonna go back to configure. We'll go back to color patches. We can add two rows if we want. Hit okay. And now we have two rows automatically. So if you want, obviously when you do um, have your illustrations, you're gonna use way more colors than just like eight of them. So it's nice to have as many visible colors as possible, especially if you wanna go back and reuse one, which I have done many a time over here in the advanced color selector. I'm like, all right, I needed that blue again. I go back, select it, and I use it again. So it's really nice to make sure you have this. And the ability to change the number of rows is nice. Some people prefer just one row if it gets too much to like visually, and some people prefer all the rows. Now we can change the size of them. So we're gonna take this 25, 25, and we're gonna hit okay. So now we have nice big color blocks. And this is really helpful. I believe this should be usable on your uh, mobile, not mobile devices, but the Android devices. 
So if you just need to see it a little easier, you can go ahead and change that size. And then we're gonna change the patches for the colors from image. We're gonna make that 35, just so we can see. Hit okay. And that's bigger, perfect. We can also change how many patches are visible. So if we only want 20 visible at any given time, um, eventually that last color that we used, like let's say you use 50 colors, only the last 20 are gonna show, which is normal. Um, the same thing happened with the advanced color select there. Only so many colors were available. And eventually once you went past the point of no return for how many colors you're using, the first color you used in that image would, would be gone. And now we have a clear button too. Nope, we don't want to auto update that. So we're gonna hit okay. We can delete all those, which is nice. So if you're like, all right, none of those colors work, get rid of them, we can delete them. And put that back. Actually, I'm gonna leave that on because it's actually pretty helpful. Especially when you are in Krita and you're going through different files. Um, I do that a lot. So if I'm working on one file and I go to the next one, I don't want that color history there anymore because those colors don't, no longer are useful to me in this different illustration altogether. We can auto update. So let's say we add some colors here. All right, so auto update should be able to work, but for some reason it's not letting me auto like keep it selected. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna research that and update that in the next video. That's very strange. I could have sworn it was working before, but not sure what happened. All right, so we can also change the orientation of this. We can do vertical, where it's back on the right-hand side of the docker, kind of like it was before. And in my personal opinion, I would rather have just the color history there and have the mixed colors or colors from image down here. Okay, so I have a ton of colors here. It looks like a nice, beautiful mess. Um, looks like a nice checkerboard. We're going to go back to the configure. So I'm going to show you what this does. Color patches, we have a long orientation. Laterally, or hit OK. You can see that this changes how it looks. So if I erase a big chunk here, and I go back to my, oops, my brush tool, I pick this color, we'll change it a little bit. Watch how the color updates. It is kind of changing down here in this row. So each new color only comes here. So if you prefer all your color, your new colors to show up in this side and the column or in the row, depending on what you have, you can have it done laterally. If we do a long orientation, let me erase that. You can see that it's going through the row. It's got two uh, columns here and then it starts with the next one. So if we do a green, it just kind of zigzags down. If that makes sense. You can, I don't know, I'm, if that makes sense, which is pretty nice. So you can change how that updates based on your personal preference. Or you can just hit none and it just sticks to the one column. But what int what's interesting is it's just kind of updating the square and then it just gets mixed up. So it's all based on what you prefer. I'm gonna keep that as a long orientation for now. And the same thing is gonna happen with the colors from image and how it updates. All right, and that's the introduction for the wide gamut color selector. We will go over the other options in the next video. And hopefully this was a very basic introduction of what it does and how to use it. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, as a note, Krita will be um, using this by default and getting rid of the advanced color selector. So I do recommend getting used to this uh, for that reason, but it's also very, very helpful in general for picking colors and stuff. Um, I don't see any major downfall to having it be the new default. Just a matter of getting used to a new feature. 
All right, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments about this that I haven't gone over yet or that you want me to clarify on for the next video, let me know in the comments down below and I will make note of it best I can. Um, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video on this docker and I will see you in the next one.